All right, now, so welcome back. And we have other big stories that we want to talk about. And today, first of all, let's remind you what happened during the week. Judith, please. Oh, yes, indeed. It, uh, of course, the very first and a very sad incident was the fire that happened in Dosimo Market. It happened earlier this week where residents of Lagos woke up to the alarming sound of fire alarms and the sight of fires raging in the Dosumo Market neighborhood of Lagos Island. The situation took a turn for the worse when four of the 14 affected buildings uh, collapsed during the uh, efforts of uh, the, uh, to extinguish the fires. Now, our correspondent at Dushaga was actually on ground. With stellar reporting, by the way, we must say, uh, facing the danger there. She joined us, uh, or she will be joining us later on. But for now, we have Mr. Ibrahim Fahinui with us. He is the coordinator of Lagos Territorial Office of NEMA. You are welcome, sir. Good to have you here on the show today. Good morning Grand. to you, sir. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, uh, first of all, well done with uh, so far. This is um, the, a fire that happened uh, that it took a turn for the worse we have seen so far from the numbers that we've heard in the press and in the news, 14 buildings have now uh, been raised down. But can you tell us about what the response time li was like and the beginning of the fire, how it started? Just give us an update, an overview of how your, any challenges um, your or anything. agency was able to chat to rise up to the challenge. Well, uh, based on uh, eyewitness reports, you know, in the last three weeks, we had similar incidents mm -hmm. involving about four multi-story buildings. And uh, that time, we had a partial collapse of building then. Uh, two weeks ago, we met all the sectional heads of the markets. We went to them. We related the challenges. We found out during that, Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to go on a very short break, but when we come back on the other side, we will continue with our uh, the uh, uh, co coordinator of Lagos Territorial on NEMA, and he's going to give us more insight on the fire incident. Stay with us, and we're anyway. Welcome back. Apologies for that technical, uh, technicality we had there, but uh, we're back now. And we still have with us Mr. Ibrahim Farinlouye from NEMA. Uh, you're welcome again, sir. We asked you earlier before we went, we were asking regarding the challenges that you uh, faced while you were trying to put out these fires and also the response time from NEMA. Well, uh, the response time for responders was less than, less than about five minutes. Mm. Because within that vicinity, we have Nigerian Port Authority Fire oh, good. Service. We have Federal Fire Service, the Zona Headquarters there. Mm. The State Fire Service have about five, I mean, three uh, response Units. St stations yeah, okay. within that area. What kept them a bit late was the surging crowd. Mm. The surging crowd was a major and problem. that's what I wanted to ask about. How did they handle the situation with the crowd, knowing how we react to fires in Nigeria? Throw up your water. What, what was it like exactly uh, dealing with all of that? Well, it's part of uh, what we have been used to. So, you know, at the initial stage, when you are responding, mm -hmm. mobilizing stakeholders will take a little bit of time. But the uh, the community security agencies within that uh, community. You know, we have a C a CBA okay. managing the security and they stay within the marketers. So those ones who are trying to work, the Nigerian Neighborhood Watch, they are also there. The Nigerian police, we have about uh, two divisions of the Nigerian police. Immediately the fire started, the radio communication was sent and they started calling here and there. The police were calling, DSS were calling, other agencies were calling for stakeholders to respond. So what we need to do then was to, those who are on ground, what are the level? Mm -hmm. What is the level of disasters from there we are mobilizing from mainland and other stakeholders mm -hmm. within the island there? One good thing was that just barely two weeks after meeting the community, uh, the sectional heads of the association in the whole Lagos Island, we have about 42 different markets within that area. Wow. We met them and we, have, we gave them some hints on what and what to do as preliminary step towards having 
a very robust uh, mitigation aspect Think to that. Away from mitigation, let's talk a bit about the um, let's talk a bit about all that was in terms of uh, 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 the uh, the party in and of itself. Um, <clears throat> So during the, 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 we understand now that 14 buildings had been pulled down in the market. 14 buildings have been pulled down. Why uh, was it necessary to pull down the 14 buildings? Well, it's being pulled down. It's yet to be completed. Okay. These are the most impacted buildings that caught, that had the impact of the fire. Mm -hmm. Possi there is possibility that more of such building will go down. But mm -hmm. Lagos State Building Control Agency and the Ministry of uh, Physical Plan will carry out, as directed by the, as, uh, Mr. Governor, Babajide Shanwolu, that integrity tests must be carried out to determine the suitability of okay. continuous use so that it won't pose danger to the lives of any resident mm. or anybody going through that place. Fortunately, you saw what happened while the fire was on. Yeah. Your correspondent. Yeah, she had to take off. She had to take off. <laughs> and you know, it's part of the risk yeah. that journalists yes. always face. Though it's not a risk to journalists, we it's are the used job. to it, but personal safety. So why you have been trained to know the risk and adapt to the risk, manage the risk, Ordinary Nigerians will not know it. Mm. And even if they know it, God forbid syndrome will mm. always keep them at arm's length. Mm. So, so demolition more, do it, carrying out integrity tests is very, very important. Okay. And secondly, the governor have directed that all those closed buildings that do not have space, the space must mm -hmm. be created. Mm -hmm. So how many buildings will be, determined, will be uh -huh. uh, pulled down? How many structure shops that will go until when integrity test and the Minister of Fiscal Planning concludes their preliminary investigation? Okay, sir. So, so um, I have a very interesting question here regarding how you guys managed the situation while the fire was raging. Uh, it's one thing that people argue that the neighbors' reactions are always reactionary, only after, you know, you, but you spoke about the fact that you had a meeting with all the stakeholders, the 42 uh, different associations. However, 42. yeah. However, there on camera, we saw how people were surging to the fire. They weren't helping, but they were just there watching, videoing, and doing all of that. How did you manage, or how does NEMA manage the instances of crowd now, the crowd, crowd control. control? What exactly do you people do? Let in those me state this. It's not NEMA, per se. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. NEMA doesn't, cannot exist without stakeholders. I know the law of the Federation gives the mandate of emergency management to NEMA, but NEMA cannot stay on its own. Based on the regular stakeholders meeting, coordination assessment, coordination meeting, we have identified the challenges we are supposed to have. Like the police, they are aware. We have various organs, task force are there. The DSS will be there. All other local, I mean, state structures will be deployed. As we are having it, we might, because we need to be careful. You can't, because we are responding to disaster, then you hurt anybody along the line. It can, that one can be more fatal to us. Because mm -hmm. the crowd will not see what is happening, that you are rushing. It is the man that is knocked down. Mm. They can react. And attack us. So you're saying it's not the duty of NEMA to control the crowd, no, but I'm other saying, stakeholders. You see, when you get to a level, controlling the crowd has to be tactical. Yeah. And it has to be controlled because you don't know whether a journalist is coming in mm. or a security personnel in Mopti is coming in to come and respond. So when you are controlling the crowd, it's also very, very tactical. And we have a techn uh, technical way of doing it. The only problem we have is when such incidents or among the crowd who are trying to take a snapshot of the events, they are always diverted. Even when you are trying to control them, move out, move this way, what they are doing, they will get consumed. Mm -hmm. And most, uh, another aspect is even when you are responding from your station to get to the scene, the problematic, the major one are the elites on the highway. Oh. They will not give you way. Mm. 
The commercial drivers, once they hear you from a distance, they give you a bed. The elites will even behave as if they are not hearing your siren. All, uh, even, uh, all efforts to, we, many of us will have to come down, start eating their vehicle before they will recall. Uh, and this was the case wow. in this case as well? The elites, yeah. So mostly we have problems with the elites. What are some problems that you have as well when it comes to fire in terms of um, proactiveness and measures that are being taken to uh, make sure that we don't have consistent fire outbreak? Now, I know that uh, towards the end of uh, 2022, as well as always the first quarter of 2022, the end of during the Hamilton and the dry season, there is always a circular that is put out by the uh, meteorological uh, agency as well as NEMA and every other agency to warn Nigerians against uh, 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 environmental factors and conditions that could contribute to fire. And we know that Lagos is densely populated, but somehow we don't heed to advice and we don't heed uh, to this call by the government and these agencies. And this was the same issue you just pointed out. You're driving on the highway trying to get to a fire outbreak as quickly as possible and time matters. But the elite, who should know better and not driving out of the way? So what are some issues that you have faced with the average Nigerian when it comes to taking proactive measures to, to, uh, to curb fire incidents or not to even have fire incidents? Well, you know, disaster risk reduction. We are not supposed to be waiting for disaster mm, true. to start. And that was why I said we made the leadership mm -hmm. of the market in that very island to tell them, these are some of the things we have found out and what are the solutions. Earlier before that, this year, about two or three years ago, we had met them too. We brought in various insurance companies, introduced it to them. We gave them the idea, fire marshals, at least in strategic position within streets, so that if there is any outbreak, before it gets out of hand, manage it before start to trade agents. Okay, so, so say that again, there's fire marshals in East Street. How exactly areas. are they represented? Uh, fire marshals as in individuals or units or places or the infrastructure? The association leadership will select certain number of persons within their community, okay. within their ah. area. Okay. We train them okay. as professional firefighters. So how to are manage. they to So assist? once there is anything, information gets to the community. You know, disaster occurs in the community. And the community members are the first responders. Yeah. Once they are able to manage that, what disaster means is any situation that overwhelms the capacity of the community. Mm -hmm. So once the capacity of that community goes off, mm -hmm. when they are overwhelmed, it is then they need uh -huh. the assistance, either of NEMA or any other agency. So we are trying, what we told them then was, mm -hmm. let us train you. Yeah. Then disaster management is bottom up. It uh, has to start from the grassroots. Yes, indeed. Up. So the children, we have disaster risk reduction club in almost all the secondary schools. Oh, we right. have grassroots uh, drivers, executive uh, uh -huh. volunteers on disaster management are there. So what we have been doing is to let them know the essence. And one important thing, apart from the elites on the road, when disaster occurs, the adults always forget, they get traumatized and they get frustrated on what to do mm. at that particular time. But the children, while we train them, the children will always remember what they have learned That's very in classrooms. So they will rise up, call, they mostly they call the attention of their parents. That's oh, this is what we are taught, can you do this? Wow. And most of them have the emergency mm. numbers mm. of various organizations, the Nigerian police, the DSS, we roll it out to them while we are training them. Okay. Not That's very interesting, sir. And other areas. Very interesting. So I can imagine that you guys would actually have functions in schools where you go and teach children so that they're able to disseminate these messages to their parents. Ms. Ibrahim, thank you very much for coming Many through. You've also you. educated us because we found out some things about NEMA that we didn't know, especially about the marshals. That's very interesting. And I hope that you guys continue on. Yes, with that I work. think you two, you need a proper training in this. Oh, yes, we yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> no, we do. We <laughs> have looked you. around, I've assessed the whole compound. I, are, I trust you're welcome. Trouble. You're welcome. I trust to please you. come in and train I, us. Oh, and we, we expect <laughs> you to come in as well. It's uh, very, very important. Thank uh, you very much. We sir. have uh, lots of cables and wires and everything else lying around. And of course, uh, thank you again, once again, sir, for coming on. Thank you.